good morning students and welcome to today's session so we will be starting with uh, the next chapter today which is work power and energy So we'll start with the most basic definition in this chapter, work power and energy. That is the definition of a quantity called work done by a force. So basically, work done by a force is defined in such a way that it's a scalar quantity related to force and displacement. So what happens is in this chapter, we are dealing with scalar quantities like work done, energy, etc. In describing you know, how a mechanical system evolves. And the advantage of that is that you know, it's easier to analyze because direction is not involved. It is scalar analysis. And therefore, ultimately, what we're going to develop the work energy theorem is going to give us a somewhat easier analysis for certain type of systems compared to Newton's laws of motion. So it's very much part of mechanics. And we're going to use these concepts like work, energy, kinetic energy, potential energy, etc to describe the same kind of mechanical systems in general, but through a different method, which involves scalar analysis as opposed to vector analysis. So there lies the advantage of uh, this, this kind of uh, analysis over Newton's laws of motion or friction or you know free body diagram, second law, etc. So anyhow, let's start with the first definition that is the work done by a force. work or work done by a force okay now this will also be defined in different ways for different type of situations so the first situation we'll see is a very simple one where we are talking about work done by a constant force So what we mean by constant force is a constant force is one which has constant magnitude and direction both okay so in such a case if we have a force f which is constant in magnitude as well as direction then the work done is defined as f dot s so w here is work done by force f through a displacement of s for its point of application. So I'll explain this point a little bit further, but just note down this definition first. So in words, we can say that work done is equal to scalar product or dot product of force and displacement. This further becomes F into S into cos theta, where theta is the angle between the force and the displacement.
Okay. Now let's also understand about the dimensions and unit of work done. So dimension of work done, as you can see, will become the dimension of force into dimension of displacement. So accordingly, the dimension of work done will become mass into length square into time to the power minus two. And yes, very good, Josh. And the unit in standard international system, the unit of work is expressed in joules. So one joule equals to one Newton meter or one kilogram meter square per second square. Yes, that's correct. And in CGS system, centimeter gram second, that type of system, the unit is called ergs. So one erg equals to one dying centimeter. Oh, that is the same thing as one gram centimeter square per second square. So also you can see that one erg equals to 10 raised to the power minus seven joules or one joule equals to 10 raised to the power seven ergs. So this is about the units and dimension. Just make a quick note of this. You know, another very important point we will see Yeah, another important point you will see here is uh, what we discussed about the displacement S in the definition. Okay, you haven't noted, just a moment, we'll go back. Yeah, just finish it, it's fine.
Okay, now in the definition, yeah, if the displacement is in the direction of the force, obviously cos theta will become one. That's correct, Josh. That's good. But uh, you know, before we get into those specific cases, I want to discuss what we mean by this point that it is the displacement of the point of application, this point okay, of the force. So when we have defined this for a constant force, okay, S over here is the displacement of the point at which the force F acts. So for example, if we see a very sim the simplest situation of this is where the force is acting on a particle f acts on a particle p now a particle p is a point mass so the point of application of the force actually becomes the point mass itself okay so if the force is for example acting like this on the point mass and while it is acting like this the mass makes a displacement like this. So this is the displacement vector. So after some time, the particle has reached here. But during this time, the force continuously acts along the same direction with the same magnitude. So the same force keeps acting all the time along the same direction and with a fixed magnitude. So here, if you're talking about a particle, then S is the displacement of the point of application of F, which is the same as the displacement of the particle, which is, you can see, which is basically the displacement of the particle. So as I said, this is the simplest situation in which we are doing this kind of calculation. The force itself is acting on a particle, which is a point mass. So there's no complication about what is the point of application, how it is moving. It's basically that point mass only, the way it is moving, that is the displacement of the point of application. Now, another situation is where the force, constant force F, acts on a rigid body in translational motion or in translation. So, translation means that it moves such that There is no rotation of the rigid body involved. No rotation. Okay. So if, for example, we have this standard kind of situation that you know, there is a rigid body like a solid block, like a cubicle or a cuboidal block on a surface. Now what we are doing here is suppose we are applying the force at a particular point on the block. Continuously we are applying a force of a certain magnitude in a fixed direction. Okay. So we are applying that force at a particular point P over here. And as a result of this and other forces acting, the body displaces. So generally when we say the body displaces, we mean 
you know its center of mass is displacing by a certain amount so here also the definition of displacement is pretty simple because this point at which the force is acting let's say this point is p that is going to have the same displacement as the body itself because the body is not rotating so the particular point at which we are applied the force let's say that point is p over here that will have the same displacement as the displacement of the body so when we define the work done as f dot s here s is the displacement of the point of application of the force which is the point p and this is still it is same as or it is identical the displacement of the rigid body or you can say the rigid body is center of mass okay that is because the body is not rotating now we'll see a next example where if the body has some kind of rotation involved then it's not so simple the the displacement of the point of application will not be the same as the displacement of the center of mass so that is why i'm bringing you you know in touch with this particular concept over here in this chapter of mechanics we will be dealing always with these two type of examples either it's acting on a particle or even if it's acting on a rigid body where there is uh, the rigid body will not be involved in any kind of rotation so the point of application will always have the same displacement as the center of mass but in future chapter like rotation and properties of matter etc we will see that there might be a different situation so that is why i am make, making you familiar with that concept from before so please make a note of this first Okay, so hope this point is clear the force is continuously acting at this point but the body is moving in such a way that it does not rotate so that particular point at which we are applying the force will have the same displacement as the center of mass of the body yeah that's correct we should say there is no rotation yeah thanks for pointing that out please make a correction in the notes here moving such that there is no rotation that is the meaning of translation translation means that there is no rotation Okay, so hope this is clear. So thanks for pointing that out, Diti. Oh, uh, all of you, make sure you have made this small correction here. It's no rotation. Okay. Now let's come to another situation, which is somewhat more interesting. Okay. So suppose 
now this type of situation we won't be dealing right now we'll be coming to that in a later chapter called rotational mechanics but suppose we have a situation like this like um, a rigid body rotating about a fixed axis just see you haven't finished okay we'll come back to this example finish writing this down first yeah just yes, good question but brownian motion does not apply to a rigid body okay beta brownian motion is a type of motion that applies to uh, gaseous molecules or fluid molecules okay when they are in that random motion so then at a time each molecule will be treated like a particle if we have to for some reason find out the work done by force on one particle so a gas molecule will be treated like a particle Now, even in that kind of situation, if the molecule is what we call, um, you know, poly mole, uh, poly atomic molecule, like diatomic, a tetraatomic, something like O two or CH four, etc., then the molecule itself is like a three dimensional rigid body, and it can undergo rotation along with translation. brownian motion you will be coming to very soon in the chapter of heat and thermodynamics so you understand something called kinetic theory of gases so rigid body rotating in a uh, about a fixed axis but i think what you mean to ask uh, about brownian motion is what if the path is zigzag right just yes, that is what you mean na? so if the path is zigzag it doesn't matter na we are interested in the displacement so for example on a particle okay we'll come back to this fixed axis thing but suppose on a particle we are applying a force like this we are applying the force like this but the path of the particle is not straight na? it's zigzag so it goes like this like this like this like this like this okay and finally let's say it reaches somewhere here So it has a path like this. So we are not the this thing. No, work done will not have anything to do with path if the force is constant. As long as the force is constant, we will only be interested in displacement. So the displacement vector will be let's say this one. And all we will have to do is calculate the dot product of force and displacement. So if this angle is theta. no force can still be constant na no? kisi particle pe force constant hai ki nahi that does not depend on the type of motion that depends on the force na no? like you have a charged particle in a uniform electric field okay now i'm not saying that's the only force na no? dusre forces bhi ho sakte hain so the zigzag path is not because of the constant force na no? understood there are other forces also acting that's why you yeah, obviously if there's only constant force acting then the path cannot be zigzag if there's only constant force acting then the path will either be straight line motion or parabolic path like in projectile motion you know but you know suppose there is there is like gravitational force which is constant but also the body is continuously colliding like a dust particle moving in a very dusty room so continuously is undergoing collisions so as a result of that its path becomes zigzag but the gravitational force acting on it its weight will remain constant so something like that you can think of as an example Okay. Now let's let's come to this uh, situation I was telling you about. Now this is something very interesting. Imagine we have like this a thin rod like this, which has got a hinge at the top. So it's hinged to a wall or something. Okay. 
So this has got a fixed range. So this is a thin rod. Now what we do is we apply some kind of a force, but the force is applied at this bottom most point over here. So what we'll see as a result of the force, this might tend to rotate. So the point of application of the force, no, that one is over here. This is the point of application. Where the center of mass of the rod is here. So now if the rod goes undergo some motion, it can come like this. So after some time, if the rod has moved, to a new position. It will be such that it has rotated about the fixed hinge or the fixed axle. It has undergone a rotation. So if, if the force is acting continuously, but at that point, then we will have to consider this displacement, the displacement of the point of application of the force. That will be our S in the definition for work done. So S is the displacement of the point of application of the force. And you can see that this displacement is not equal to the displacement of the center of mass. It does not equal the displacement of the rod's center of mass. Because that center of mass will have a displacement like this over here. They're different things. They have different values. As you can see that whenever there is rotation involved, this thing happens. The displacement of the point of application is not equal to the displacement of the center of mass unless the force itself is acting at the center of mass.
Okay, so hope this example is clear to all of you. Now let's come to a physical example with numerical values for a typical type of situation that we will see in mechanics in this chapter. So as I so told you, the typical examples here will involve translation of a rigid body. It will not involve rotation. That will come in a later chapter. Okay. Anyhow. So let's say we have this situation. We have a rough surface. Coefficient of friction of that surface is 0 0.2. And we have a block which is of mass 5 kilograms. <clears throat> okay. Now this is at rest initially. Acceleration due to gravity we will take as 10 meters per second square as usual. Now what we are doing is we are going to pull this block by the application of a force, constant force that acts such that the magnitude of the force is 50 newtons and it continuously acts at an angle of 37 degrees to the horizontal. So after some time, this is the initial position. After some time, the body reaches here, where it has covered a distance of, let us say, 5 meters. Okay. So, calculate the work done by each of the forces. by each of the force forces or each force acting on this body through s is equal to 5 meter displacement okay so first of all you have to understand this not just this external force f there are other forces also okay so what are those forces? What are their directions and magnitudes? You have to determine that. Then for each of the forces, you have to calculate the work done. Just try this out. You should understand when we say that a force is constant, it means that both magnitude and direction are constant or fixed. Okay, so this is a pretty simple situation. Just you know, sort of make the free body diagram to understand what all forces are acting and how much are their magnitudes. And then from that, you can understand the definition of work done later by dot product of the force with displacement. Yes, very good, Just that's correct. Very good, that's correct. So in all, there will be <clears throat> four forces acting on it. And a gravitational force or weight, normal reaction, <coughs> friction, that is kinetic friction, and this force F. So out of the four, you will see gravitational force mg and normal reaction will be doing zero work because they act vertically and the displacement is horizontal. So the dot product will be zero. Whereas the other two will have some non-zero work done. Where again, you will see the interesting thing that friction will do negative work because the angle that friction is making with the displacement will be 180 degrees. So work done can be a positive or a negative quantity or even zero depending on the angle theta.
Yeah, very good. That's correct. So let's. Look at the exact values. So we make a sort of free body diagram. Understand all the forces acting on it. Is the weight of the body normal reaction? This external force F acting at theta and kinetic friction. So we have normal reaction will become mg minus F sine theta. So the normal reaction will become the weight which is 50 minus 30. Or 20 newtons. The kinetic friction become 4 newtons. So all this is given to us. Now you see the relationship with the displacement vector. The displacement vector is along this direction. And of magnitude 5 meters. So you can see that its relationship with the different forces is that this angle is 90, whereas this angle is theta. So work done by the force F will become Fs cos theta. So that is 50 into 5 into cos 37. So that is 200 joules, a positive of 200 joules. Whereas the other forces, the work done by normal reaction will be zero because normal reaction is perpendicular to the displacement. Work done by weight will also like, likewise be zero. Work done by kinetic friction, that will become how much? That will become minus mu mg s because theta is equal to 180 degrees between frictional force and the displacement vector. So use this value. So work done by friction will be minus 20 joules. So this is the calculation of work done by each of the forces.
so hope all of you understood the exact calculation remember cos 37 is 4 by 5 and not 3 by 5 some of you made that mistake yes tej which one should be what oh yeah that's correct it's not mu mg it should be mu n the value is correct is 4 newtons but it should be yes that's correct this should be mu n into yes this kinetic friction will have a magnitude of mu n which we see above is 4 newtons correct correct okay so people make sure you are aware of this <clears throat> that's correct is thanks for pointing out Okay. Next up, we will look at a more general definition of work done. What both answers are the same? Kunal, which answers you are talking about? No, no. The value substituted was correct. It was four joules. Just that I had written it as mu mg instead of mu n. The numerical value substituted was correct over here for friction. It was four newtons. Just that parametric parametrically, I written it as mu mg. That was a mistake. It should be mu n. No, no problem. So that calculation is done over here. That's why there was no mistake. So we have already done this calculation. Huh? That normal reaction is this much. So friction's magnitude is this much. So this is correct. Only here it should be mu n instead of mu mg. Okay, are we done with this? People understood this example. Any doubts? Okay. Now we come to the more general definition of work done. Okay, because this one was only a special case where we are dealing with a constant force. General definition of work done. when the force is variable so this definition will actually cover both the cases constant as well as variable so general definition that work done is defined as integration of f dot ds from initial to final position so in words it is said that work equals to what we call the path integration of the force so here f can be variable or even constant even constant is a special case of this okay variable means variable in magnitude or direction or both all cases are possible so what happens here is that if suppose on a particle we are applying a force like this and the particle is going in some kind of complicated path like this the particle goes from this initial position to this final position okay. 
through this path. Now, and also we are assuming that at every point during the path, the force can change in magnitude or direction of both. For example, the force has changed from this direction to let's say this direction and its magnitude has also changed. Later, the force has become, let's say, larger in magnitude, different in direction, then it becomes smaller. So all the time the force is varying. So if the instantaneous value of force at some time is F and for a very small time dt, the displacement is ds like this. Okay. So in this definition, F is the instantaneous value that is at that instant okay, is a small or what we call a differential displacement So this instantaneous value is the value of the force during the displacement of ds. During that small displacement ds, okay, if the instantaneous value of force is f, then the work done for that small displacement is f dot ds. So the total work done from initial to final position becomes the summation of f dot ds for all the points. And that is nothing but integration. That summation is calculated by integration. Yes, that's correct, okay. So basically for this small displacement ds, the work done is f dot ds. So during ds displacement, the work done by the force is a small amount, so we write it as this. Therefore, for the full path, okay, the work done becomes integration of this or integration or integrated sum. We're calculating the sum of f dot ds for every point from initial to final. So that summation is calculated by integration over here. Definite integration from initial to final position. So just make a note of this definition and as we discuss examples, it will become more clear to us how we execute this definition. Okay. Okay, people, so hope this is clear. Let's understand this with some examples now. Achha, before we come to examples, let's also understand that if the force is constant, okay, then this integration automatically reduces to F dot S, but only if the force is constant. Otherwise, F cannot come outside the integration. It will not be F dot S. Okay, so finish writing that down and add this point. 
at the end that if the force is constant, then automatically integration of f dot ds just becomes f dot s. But if it is variable, then we cannot write this step. Okay. This step over here. Okay, so make sure you note down this point also for them. So basically the work done of any and every force, work done by any and every force is defined by this relation. If the force happens to be constant, then further the path integration reduces to simple dot product f dot s. Okay, so next up, let's look at an example of variable force. So the most natural example is the work done by spring force. So suppose we have this situation. We have an ideal spring, which we are using to connect with a block like this. Now, initially, X is equal to zero for the spring. That is the spring is in its natural length condition. Now, the block is displaced by means of some kind of external force acting on it. by applying some external force, we have displaced the block such that this has become L plus D because the block basically has got displaced for distance of D. So given that the spring constant is let's say 50 newtons per centimeter and the displacement of the block that we are making d small d is two centimeters we have to calculate the work done by the spring force okay. 
the spring force or the tension in the spring acting on the block. We're not concerned about the external forces now. We're just concerned about the spring force, which will act like this now. So be the direction of spring force. So going from here to here, how much work the spring force is doing? So the important thing here is that the spring force will vary. It's a variable force. Because x varies from 0 the final value of d. So the magnitude of the spring force varies, so the direction is always opposite. Yeah, initially x is equal to 0 for the spring. There's no extension. It's at natural length position. So that's in the first diagram. Now what we are doing is we are displacing the block from this position here to the final position I've shown by application of some external force. So in that process, now what is happening, there is a certain amount of work done by the spring. We have to calculate that. Okay, that is what we are doing in this example. Uh, be careful of the unit, Jesh. The answer you given, it will, if, if you're writing it that numerical value, then it will not be Joule. Because you have taken your, you know, displacement in centimeters and spring constant in Newton per centimeter. So you have to be a little careful. Better is you convert it to SI units beforehand only, no? So when you substitute, na, convert these to SI units. This is 50 into 10 raised power 2 or 5,000 Newton per meter. Whereas this is going to be 0 0.02 meters or 1 50th of a meter. Yes, that's correct now. Okay. Good. So let's just work this out. So what we'll do is now, we will first see that at some intermediate point, that is you've not yet reached your final state. This is the situation. So x as yet is less than d but greater than 0. So the spring force acting will be how much? It will be kx in magnitude. Okay. Now from here, let's say you make a very small displacement. So make a small displacement dx in this direction okay. while the spring force is acting in this direction. So for the small displacement, dx, you are writing in vector form, you can write it as dx is plus dx i cap along the x axis. The work done by the spring for that small displacement will be spring forces dot product with displacement. So that will be minus of spring force into dx. So that will be minus kx into dx. This is the work done by the spring in the small displacement of dx or the small displacement dx. So now from this, we can see the total work done, how to calculate. Okay. So net work done by the spring from x equal to 0, that is the initial state, to x equal to d, the final state. So 
so that will become minus kx dx integrated from the initial position where x was 0 to the final position where x is d so work done by spring will now come out to be minus half e d square after putting the limits now in this you substitute your k as what was it now 50 newtons per centimeter yeah and d was two centimeters So you'll get it as minus one joules. Uh, no, just that is not true. If the spring is being stretched, no, it does negative work. Whereas if the spring is going back from stretched position to natural length position, that time the work done by the spring will be positive. Similarly, if the spring is being compressed, then the spring will be doing negative work. But if after giving compression, you allow the spring to come back to natural state, then the work done by the spring will be positive. Understood, no? So if we have stretched out the spring over here, now, then we release the external force. So the spring force will bring the block back to the natural state. So in that situation, the work done by the spring will be positive. But here in this situation, the work done by the spring is negative because we are stretching the spring. Okay, so there will never be any hard and fast rule that a particular force will always do positive work or negative work. The only one you can be sure of is kinetic friction. Kinetic friction acts in such a way that it opposes slipping. So always the point of application of kinetic friction moves opposite to the, uh, to the um, direction of force. So kinetic friction always does negative work. But for other forces, we can't, you know, depending on different situations. No, but just the displacement is not in the direction of spring force now. See, we are pulling the block opposite to the spring force now. So spring force is trying to bring the block back to where it started from, but we are pulling it in the opposite direction. So the spring force is ending up doing what kind of work? Negative work now. I didn't say the block is going back now. We are just calculating the work done from the initial state where the spring was at natural length to the stretch state now where we have forcefully pulled the block through a distance d against the spring so in in that situation what is the work done by the spring it will be a negative quantity you understanding i'm not concerned with what happens if i release the work now yeah what you are saying is like that if i release the block now it will the, the spring will pull it back to the natural state and for doing that it will do positive work but in this particular question, I have not asked that. No, in this particular question, I have asked to take the spring from natural length to an extension of two centimeters during that part of the process, how much work is done. So that will be negative. Okay, good. Okay. Let's look at another example of work done by variable force. So suppose we have a situation where a particle moves along the x axis. 
ओके फाइन राइट इट डाउन तेज ओके सो तेज आई डन विद दिस नाउ अच्छा यू वांट टू गो बैक टू द क्वेश्चन ओके जस्ट अ सेकंड या सो दिस वाज द क्वेश्चन बेटा ओके नाउ लेट्स कम टू अनदर एग्जांपल ऑफ वेरिएबल फोर्स Now, for example, you know, Coulombic force, right? Electrostatic at attraction or repulsion, Coulombic force. It it depends on the distance between two particles, right? It's one by x square type, where x is the distance. So let's look at an example of that type. So suppose we have a particle that is moving along our x-axis. So it's a one D motion along the x-axis, such that when the particle is at some x coordinate like this 
it experiences a variable force so a particle in 1d motion along the x axis experiences a variable force is the magnitude of the forces like this let's say alpha upon x square where x is the position of the particle in meters and alpha is a constant so let's say we even give some value of alpha suppose alpha is 20 newton meter square because the force will be in newtons okay. now as the particle moves from this position a where the x coordinate is one meter to this position b let's say where the x coordinate has become five meters we have to calculate the work done by this force find the work done by this force as the particle moves from a to b the work done from a to b that's what we have to calculate okay so in this particular case the force is acting in the positive x direction and the displacement is also happening in the positive x direction so what you would expect is that you would get a positive value of work done but we cannot directly say the work done is forced into displacement because it's a variable force so you have to use the integration f dot ds you have to use it will become a simple integration because force and displacement are in same direction Let me try this out it's a very simple integration
Okay. Let me verify the answer, people. So what we will do is, no, we will take at this intermediate time, the forces value is how much alpha by x square, and a small displacement dx. If it's happening, for that, the work done is how much f into dx directly here, because the angle is okay. So for a small displacement dx okay, at x equal to x, where x is something in between one and five. The force is alpha by x square. So the work done will just become alpha by x square dx. So total work done from A to B so we just want to do this from the point A to the point B. So that is integration of alpha dx by x square from A, where x is equal to 1, to B, where x is equal to 5. So there's a simple integration, as you know. Alpha into minus 1 by x. Okay. Integration of 1 by x square is given by this formula. Okay. The indefinite integration would be minus 1 by x plus c. So alpha comes outside over here. This so it just becomes alpha is a constant, so don't need to worry about that. So it becomes like this. Yeah. So this becomes alpha into minus one by five minus of minus one by one so one minus one by five or four fifths of alpha okay now alpha was 20 so 16 is the correct answer and all of you have got the correct answer those who have sent me the answer each and every one of you got the correct answer so that's very good Yes, Vashist, Jash. Okay. So 16 Joule is the correct answer because everything is in SI unit. So the answer will also be in SI unit. So here, you know, you can even think of it like this, that the force as a vector is along the x-axis and the displacement also as a vector is dx i cap. That's how the dot product is giving us this positive quantity, alpha by x squared dx. Now, the only thing is when you're substituting the limits, you have to be very careful about sign and all that. If you miss that minus sign with the one by x, then you will unnecessarily get a negative sign in the work done also. And that will be the wrong result. So while doing these type of integrations, you have to be very, very careful with the algebraic sign, with the substitution of limits. Okay. Take your time and make sure each and every step is done correctly.
Yeah, Diti, I'll show you the question once more. Okay, so this, this was the question that we have like this, a particle moving along the x-axis on which there is a variable force acting like this. There's a variable force acting along the x-axis whose magnitude is given by alpha by x square and direction is along the positive x direction, as you can see. This is given. Now we have to calculate the work done by this force as it goes from the point A, which you have seen here, to the point B. So the x-coordinate is five meters. Okay, good. So this is about the you know, simple examples of work done by variable force in 1D. Similarly, we will look at work done by variable force in 2 and 3D also in subsequent view. But before we come to more examples, we will see the we will see the very important concept of the relationship between work done and kinetic energy. So that will be called the work kinetic energy theorem. So if a particle or a body is moving with this velocity v. The kinetic energy is defined as half mv square. So we say that the work kinetic energy theorem is given by the statement that the net work done by all the forces acting on the body is the change in kinetic energy. So this is the net work done by all forces acting on a body and this is the change in its kinetic energy. So change in kinetic energy will be this. If the speed is changing from V initial to V final, So you know that the quantity speed, the instantaneous speed V is magnitude of instantaneous velocity. Okay. So this is the statement of work kinetic energy theorem. Where you understand that if you take m in kilograms and the speed in meter per second, then kinetic energy is in joules. Okay. So we will conclude today's session here today and uh, we will look at applications of this work kinetic energy theorem in detail in the next lecture. So just make a note of this and we'll conclude today's lecture. So you can start going through the theory of uh, work and work kinetic energy theorem, etc., from Resnick Halliday or even H.C. Verma. Start looking at some of the solved examples also. Okay, I'm sure all of you have the module number two of physics. That is uh, good, just that's good to know. Okay, so continue doing well in the lectures. So yeah, I'm sure all of you have the module two of physics. Uh, so module number two will have uh, the work energy theorem and work energy chapter. Okay. And in HC Verma also, it is the same chapter after friction. You'll be doing rotational mechanics in 11th only beta. Okay. This year, everything is extended. Na? 11th exams will also get little bit delayed. So rotation will be done in 11th. Center of mass and rotation, the next two chapters in mechanics will be done in 11th itself.
all right that's it for today's session people wish you all the best